have identified some very, very interesting anomalous um, type of aircraft. The traffic is quite luminous and is exhibiting some anomalistic motion of it. Uh, moved very rapidly at any speed or whether any direction it wanted to go, by could change and go to the right or the left or go crossways uh, without hesitating a bit. What do you think it was? Well, if they call it a flying saucer, that's what it is. EWA-517, do you want to report a UFO? Over. Negative. We don't want to report. It wasn't my worst Wednesday night. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Anomaly Now, straight out of Austin, Texas. This is the weekly live news roundup for the 501c3 nonprofit Anomaly Archive Scientific Anomaly Institute. I'm your host, Smiles Lewis. Thank you for joining us, whether live or recorded. Great to be here. And we just last Saturday had our first monthly Anomaly Academy online lecture. That was featuring Brent Rains presenting a lifetime of exploring the UFO mystery and its psychic components. And uh, that's just the first in the now ever continuing series that we're going to be doing. You can find out more about our Patreon over at patreon.com and I'll slash anomaly archives. Donors, supporters, members at the $10 or monthly level or higher get access to the monthly archives. The, the live monthly event and continuing archives thereafter. And uh, you can, like I say, find out more about that over at patreon.com slash anomaly archives. And if you can't uh, manage the $10 a month, we understand there are $1, $2 and $5 a month membership levels. But again, the $10 level gets you access to that month's lecture and the growing back catalog of other uh, lectures. So Meanwhile, you can go to our Flipboard as usual and find all kinds of information over there. There's all kinds of great news articles that some of which I'm not going to get to tonight, like from Live Science, ants perform life-saving operations, the only animal other than humans known to do so. That's pretty intriguing. Haven't had the chance to read that yet. And what's next for Aero, A-A-R-O, from Douglas Dean Johnson. That's the fellow who loves to criticize people like Jacques Vallée and Ray Stanford or keep them, keep them on their toes. Well, let's dive right in. There is some some issues that we should definitely cover, and those include the work of expandingfrontiersresearch.org, uh, reporting on some of the darker sides of the UFO paranormal community. Several years back, the then head of MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, uh, was entrapped, was caught soliciting a minor for things that he shouldn't have been doing, sadly. Yes, uh, but justice is served, hopefully. Jury finds Harzan guilty by Jack Brewer, Brewer and Eric Lukes. Jan Harzan was found guilty by a jury Thursday of contacting a minor with intent to commit a specified offense and meeting a minor to commit lewd conduct, according to court records obtained by Expanding Frontiers Research. The former executive director of the Mutual UFO Network was removed from his position as report surfaced of his July 3rd, 2020 arrest in Newport, California, Newport Beach, California. Arzan was booked on the charges after police accused him of soliciting sexual activity from a detective who was posing online as a 13-year-old girl. You can find the links to the court summary for Orange County Superior Court of California at the link there. The last two paragraphs say in this EFR.org Expanding Frontiers Research.org article. The summary reflects a long series of hearings that began in 2020. Harzan pleaded not guilty to the charges that culminated into a jury trial that concluded this week. Sentencing is scheduled for July 26th. The felony charges could result in up to eight year prison sentences, substantial fines, and sex offender registration under California guidelines. You know, um, Harzan already had displayed his uh, true colors, perhaps in the wake of the 
Ventra debacle, whereby the, I think, Pennsylvania MUFON director, who is one of their larger donors, had made some very racist comments online. And instead of censuring uh, and kicking that represent the MUFON representative out of the organization, Arzan issued a public statement that many people found unbelievable on the part of an executive director of a nonprofit, how, how he tried to just kind of smooth over the situation and move on, uh, probably so as not to lose the funding from this donor who, who is still active in MUFON, still holding conferences. We reported on uh, uh, this uh, the Getting Spooked podcast blog, Tanner Boyle's report on his experience going to one of those, going to a conference put on by Ventra, V-E-N-T-R-E, and yeah, not good stuff. Now, I'd like to think that MUFON is always trying to reform its image, always trying to do better, as any organization should, but um, these, these are several dark stains on its history. Of course, hopefully the the uh, horrific nature of this on the part of former director Jan Harzen is not a deeper reflection of the problems of the organization, but who knows? Meanwhile, another story involving Erica Lukes that's not really particularly paranormal oriented, but just the kinds of people that one encounters in life and unfortunately in these fields. For those that don't know, Erica became romantically involved in a, I believe, a security guard at the Skinwalker Ranch many years ago, um, maybe before it was called Skinwalker Ranch. I, I don't know all the, the, the history of this other than she has been trying to get this individual properly charged and detained and to make her and her family safe again. Uh, Fox13now.com has this article about the Utah soldier discharged after domestic violence charges. Finally, it's, it's abhorrent to me how long this has taken given the information and the criminal acts perpetrated against multiple people, including Erica. Um, and, uh, She's incredibly strong for having survived all of this, but I'm sure she'd rather not focus too much on this. But I do want to give you a, a sampling of what this case is about from this Fox 13 program. There were so many emotions that I had to deal with going through um, all of that and not knowing if I was going to wake up, you know, the next day and see my family. So they would not be permitted to, um, to handle handle weapons for two and a half years your honor what i'd be requesting is to uh, continue it to another pretrial judge defense is just asking for a continuance fox 13 has been telling you about a utah national guard soldier accused of domestic violence i absolutely feel like i'm being victimized um repeatedly and on tape threatening two presidents i have no issues and taking a gun and shooting starting shooting left for the at their rallies no problem at all. Now we can report that he recently served jail time, something his ex-wife was pushing for, but she still isn't satisfied. Has the National Guard been cooperative in this matter or hindrance? No, I, would you I describe know it? of no reason to think that they haven't been cooperative with us. I'm Fox 13 investigative reporter Nate Carlisle. This is what the National Guard and the Utah justice system did and didn't do. Christian Marks was a sergeant first class in the Utah Army National Guard. Recently, he was the defendant in a Farmington courtroom. He's been in a lot of courtrooms since we first reported on him in 2021. Waiting for, for these cases to go has been very traumatic in and of itself. Erica Lukes was Mark's wife and victim. He was charged with multiple counts of misdemeanor domestic violence. Lukes has pushed law enforcement to hold Mark's accountable since he violated protective orders meant to protect her. I don't feel like I am being properly protected um, as a victim of domestic violence. As Marx's cases moved through civilian courts, the National Guard placed Marx in a status where he couldn't be promoted. But they didn't discharge Marx either. Not even when Luke gave the guard this. Biden, Biden, buddy, Biden, both of them. Biden, Biden, I fucking hate his guts. I want to, if I ever see him, if I ever meet him in person, God forbid. Are you ever I'm going to insult the president and beat the f 
fuck out of them. Recordings of Marx threatening Presidents Obama and Biden and protesters. This is what a National Guard spokesman told us last year. Until somebody determines that to be a valid and credible threat, uh, then it's, it's very difficult for us to take you know, any sort of severe uh, adverse action against a soldier. But for unknown reasons, the Guard changed its stance in February. That's when Luke's victim's advocate told her Marx was being discharged. I definitely do question, though, why it has taken um, such a long time. The advocate saying Marx received a general discharge. It allows him to keep his veterans' benefits. A general discharge is, is in my opinion, not enough. The National Guard would not confirm Marx's discharge type and would not speak to us about him this time. Meanwhile... So you can find the rest of that video at the link there, fox13now.com, and we'll have it in the show notes. By the way, again, the show notes are now going to exclusively be on our Anomaly Archives website where we have different pages for each of these episodes of Anomaly Now. And I just thank goodness that justice may have finally been served, though clearly not enough and not quickly enough. Well, on a positive note, you know, we were on the success stories coming out of New Mexico with regard to David Marler's in UFO HRC, National UFO Historic Records Center and expanding and expanding and it's growing and growing and has recently partnered with the public school system there to have a, a permanent, well, not a permanent, a five-year home there in the public school system's buildings. And that's really going to take their their work to the next level, get them, get more people access. This is good news. And it's been getting a lot of coverage. A lot of, obviously, the New Mexico news stations are covering it. You would expect that. But I wasn't expecting Maine the, the state of Maine, the local news network there to cover this. Now, they utilize some of the same footage that other stations are using to cover the news about this archive, but they, of course, lead it off with their own local color. And check that out. decade or so, various publications have ranked the state of Maine pretty highly for an eerie phenomenon, UFO sightings. But the state's history with unknown flying objects goes back much farther. One famous case is the Allagash abduction. On an August night in 1976, Chuck Rack and his friends saw what they believe is a UFO. Rack also is an artist who turned the experience into paintings. He and three friends had been fishing on Eagle Lake. They built a large bonfire in the evening when the craft approached. Rack says he signaled the vessel with his flashlight and several of the friends say they were abducted. In November of 1994, people in the Newport area reported seeing unexplained lights. Two people with no prior relationship described seeing the same thing, a flying vessel which had red, green, and white lights that flashed. And for the last 70 years or so, people across the country have been making a concerted effort to collect more information about UFO sightings. And now much of that information is finding a new home. Reporter Griffin Rushton visited the National UFO Historical Records Center in New Mexico how you interpret what a UFO is, you know, is it misidentification of something prosaic? Is it alien? Is it something else? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's history. And UFO record archivist David Marler believes that. At the end of the day, it's history and they are preserving it. And this is important work. And I'm so glad that they are getting this kind of recognition. But again, I just found it interesting that this local Maine news station took it as an opportunity to talk about their own local UFO notable sightings and encounters. I, I just found that nice. Obviously, you know, these these ne these different news stations local are networked through their, their affiliates of their national networks. But uh, meanwhile, I went of a, a sighting through a Timbanal over at Coast to Coast AM reporting on a mass sighting of a UFO at the Red Rocks. A music venue. I have never been to this music venue. It, it is so iconic and I've always wanted to, to go there and see some music there. But is that a UFO above me? Um, anyway, Tim Benal on June 28th of this year posted over at coast to coast am.com. A wild UFO report reportedly penned by a worker at the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado claims that a dozen employees observed a massive flying saucer that appeared over the site. 
The remarkable account was submitted to the National UFO Reporting Center, not to be confused with the National UFO Historic Records Center, hours after the incident allegedly occurred on June 5th. The individual detailing the case explained that they were, quote, working at Red Rocks Amphitheater around 1 a.m., quote, when one of our coworkers suddenly said to us, hey, what is that over there? It looks like a spaceship. And uh, yeah, so check. You can, oh, you can find the original uh, news report, or rather the original UFO sighting report over at newfork.org. That's N-U-F-O-R-C dot O-R-G. And that's there. And here is that local news report. It's And of course, they had to joke about it, of course. Trending now. So far this year, there have been 38 reports of UFO sightings reported at the National UFO Reporting Center. Well, there's one that has caught the Internet's eye involving Red Rocks. The report says two Red Rocks Amphitheater employees saw some sort of dark metallic disc fly over the sky about a mile from the famous venue. This was on June 5th. It apparently vanished after a few seconds. Hmm. Of course, this has been confirmed by any sort of government organization. There's no pictures. No video, but here we go I again. Mean, Another listen, case. Truth is, is when I've been out to Red Rocks recently, like... You see some things. I, I feel like other people see some things. I can smell in the air, <laughs> to be honest with you. I was going to say, people are on... They're on another planet when they're at Red Rocks sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, not me, but, you know, whatever. So, yes, it is Colorado, right? So certain things are legal there. And the, the smell, mm-hmm. So, yes. Uh, if, they're, if they're not drunk, they're high. That's what they're getting at. Well... Interesting. I, who knows whether there's actually multiple witnesses to this. We only have the sighting report. As far as I know, I have seen no other reports interviewing other witnesses, but perhaps we'll get more about this. It would be very interesting. I, there are, you know, th- this class of case whereby there are potentially mass witnesses, football games, sporting events in general, obviously big outdoor events with lots of people, music venues being being one of those. So maybe we'll hear more about this. I, I would love to, to find out more. Uh, again, another Albuquerque Journal uh, news report on uh, David Marler's organization. That's more good news. And this interesting bit from Vicente Juan Ballester Olmos on the OSAP slash ATIP confusion and He's written this paper and put it up on academia.edu. You can go and download for free. Initially planned as a raw review of Skinwalkers at the Pentagon by Lakatsky, Kelleher, and Knapp in 2021, this 74-page paper has evolved into an examination of the distinction between OSAP and ATIPS, the names for a DIA-situated effort to investigate UFOs slash UAP and the adjacent quote-unquote paranormal phenomena from 2008 to 2012, that analyzes and dissects the confusion and ambiguity surrounding these acronyms includes a comprehensive chronology of facts, events, and accomplishments related to OSAP ATIP, and the broader UAP saga in the present century places the current UAP problem into a larger historical perspective, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, yeah, you can go and you can read this there, or you can download it and read it on your, your preferred PDF reader viewer. And while I, Vicente is definitely somebody I generally respect, I, you know, everybody does not always see eye to eye in this field, but presumably this is pretty safe fact-based information that one can trust. And I'm going to wrap things up just, you know, real briefly. It appears that this 2021 J.J. Abrams UFO series that I really enjoyed, I believe it was four episodes available through Showtime, it appears that it's now, the first two episodes in their entirety are now available on YouTube. Now, I'm not sure if this is just, I'm only seeing it because of access to, like, premium YouTube, or if it is just freely available to everybody, you'll have to tell me. But if you haven't seen it, I, I would encourage you to check it out. And while, you know, it's it's now two and a half, three years old, or three and a half, three years plus old, years old, I, I thought it was pretty good. The Nothing's perfect uh, when it comes to UFO documentaries, but if you go to YouTube, you can find this video there. It'll probably market it to you because you probably already watch UFO videos, right? Well, and there's a, a long list of, of interesting people in it, including, as we just saw there, D- Diana Pasolka and Harry Reid and several military but sightings, witnesses, etc. And that's that's going to be it, folks. I, I want to keep it short tonight. And thank you for joining us. And well, oh, before, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we go, I should mention. So yeah, like I said, last week, 
Uh, last Saturday was Brent Rain's Lifetime of Exploring UFO Mystery and its Psychic Components as part of our new uh, Patreon monthly lecture series. And next next month, or rather this month, week and a half from now on Saturday the 13th is going to be Professor Wham presenting Congratulations, You're a Paranormal Researcher or How to Keep an Open Mind and Those Blue Rose Petals Forever Fresh. Yes, folks, that is a reference to the Blue Rose reports that were at the heart of Twin Peaks as explained by David Lynch's character, Gordon Cole, in the the movie Fire Walk With Me, and which inspired me to do a show many, 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 many years ago on my Anomaly Radio Network called The Blue Rose Report. But man, Professor Wham is a amazing reviewer of these phenomena, investigator of strange phenomena, always an amazing perspective. And you can find out more about her at her website, which is Professor Wham, W-H-A-M dot com. And I encourage you to check her out. And like I said, for $10, you can tune in to the live lecture this coming two Saturdays from now, week and a half from now on Saturday the 13th. And if you miss it, you get access to the the archive of it and the, the previous month's lecture. And then coming up in August is Joshua Cutchin presenting on a topic yet to be determined that'll be on August 24th. But we hope you'll check that out and consider becoming a Patreon member. And with that, I bid you good night.